I think uh, that is where we left it. So, before I move on, let's just reflect on Now, before we move on, let's just reflect on what we discussed. To the, so the routing function is at what layer of the protocol? So yeah, the routing is responsibility. Routing, the routing function is at what layer of the TCP IP protocol? Is it at application layer, a transport layer, network layer, or uh, link layer. At link layer. At what layer? Network. Network layer. Yes. Jeff, <laughs> uh, question? Uh, no. no. Okay. So first of all, that's a principle. The routing function is at the network layer. Okay. Now, assume that you have a subnet. Now you understand the meaning of subnet. The subnet means that a uh, couple of computers that have, which have the same network address. An IP address is four bytes. Part of it is a network part, part of it is a host part, right? And inside there, how do you specify how many bits you have on network, network part? Sorry, yeah, the question is to you. What's that? Subnet mask. By using subnet mask. I understand. How do we show it in, the, in practice, on CIDR? If I give you my address is, if I give you my address is a 193.6.7.8. The same thing, yeah. Okay. And I tell you that. I have 25 bits of network. How do you show it? With CIDR notation. Slash. Slash 25. Okay? So, assume that you have one host 128, the other host 193, 6, 7, 64. Slash 25. You are in Surya, you want to send it to Nana. These are your IP addresses. What does happen? What does your computer do? First of all, are these two on the same subnet? Yes or no? Yes. Why? Because uh, what, what was your name? Yes. <laughs> I was asking. <laughs> it's okay. No, 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 don't worry. Uh, so, well, are they on the same subnet? Why? Because both are the uh, same network and same subnet mask. What is the uh, your answer is correct, but it's very high level. Well, the network address of this this IP address is what? What's the network address? On um, is no 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 don't say A B C. This is important. Decider on 25 bits, 25 bits. What is the network address of this? Hmm? Uh, uh, thank you very much, Raya. <laughs> <laughs> that is this. Why did you get that? How did you get it? Okay, that is, that's true. But, but the, to the qualified answer is from this and this subnet. What is uh, what is the subnet value? What's the decimal value of the mask? What's the what's the mask on this? What's the mask on this? One twenty-eight. You know why? 
Do you know why? Yes. Okay. Jessica, are you with us? It's very simple. You know, I have this source, this destination. I want to this source. This is the CIDR address. This is the CIDR specification. 25 bits for network, 7 bits for uh, host. So I want to send it from here to here. The first thing that happens is that the network says, your computer says that, are we in the same subnet? To do so, you get a mask, which is this one. This one has all ones here, all ones here. And the last byte, what is the value? Go ahead. On, on, and on. No, no, what is the, what is the binary value of the last byte here? One, one, and six, and seven, zero. One and seven, zero. That's very true. Why is the last one for the eight? Because it's 27, 25. Because I have one byte here, eight, 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 24. Then I have one byte here, only one byte here. One bit. One bit. One bit. Thank you. One bit here. And the rest is for host part. That's okay. one bit and seven. So you put one here and seven zeros. Is one to the uh, two to the seven is one twenty eight. So that is your mask. And you mask it. Now you end it this with this. You get the network address is one ninety three six seven zero, right? And Sam, what is the network address of this fellow? Quick, well, and then speak louder, please. Um. <coughs> Whenever you have 255, all ones, when you end it, you get exactly the same number. So this is what? 193 dot, dot, dot and 64. And this and this. And this and this. 64 is what? What is the binary value of 64? It is 64 is 2 to the 6. It is 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, if you end it here, what do you get? Because 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Everything is 0. Right? Capish. Okay? So, my network address, you see that your computer, Soraya says that, Soraya's laptop says that, oh, Nana's computer, uh, Nana's network, uh, Nana's computer is, uh, has the same network address. So, we are on the same subnet, which essentially means that you are on the same LAN. Which means what? Which means that you can send it to it at the link layer. There is no routing function. It's just delivery. At the link layer, how do you do, how do, what, what, what does happen? Messages. You just broadcast it. You send it to the interface of Nana. In order to broadcast it, you, you create a frame. Okay? The payload of the frame is your datagram. That's the IP datagram. Between your IP, you have your uh, source address, destination address, and whatever came from transport. Source address is this. This one comes here. Destination address is here. Now, this is a frame that goes on your link. On the frame, there are addresses here. What address do you have to put here? My address. My address. So, then, in order to send from your computer to Nana's computer, you have to tell the link layer that what MAC address should it send it to. Do you know Nana's MAC address? Do you? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> now, when you start, usually you don't know. Okay? Don't trust me, but you don't know. <laughs> okay? So, Joe, how do we get the MAC address? Send an art. Send an art. So, before you send it, your computer sends it out, it sends an ARP. And what does the ARP say? Uh, who has 
Which address? This address. Right. Your computer sends a broadcast at the link layer. It's just that's the way Ethernet works. Sends a broadcast, puts it on the wire. You no, know, it goes all the way. Who has the uh, Who has this address? Then Nana's computer replies that I have this address, and this is my MAC address. So you put it on your MAC table, on ARP table. Your computer has a, a table. So this is a MAC address. This IP address. MAC address. How many? How long is the MAC address, Raya? Forty-eight bits. Forty-eight bits. Very good. So six bytes. So you are, whatever it is, and the IP address is one ninety-three. Uh, six, seven, sixty-four. Okay. Now you put this MAC address here. You put your MAC address here, and you send it out. Okay. Everybody hears that. Everybody in this room hears that frame, including Nana. Nana's interface grabs it because it has it matches the address. Grabs it, strips it, sends it to the higher layer, and you're done. Okay. So that is um, phase one. Assume that you want to send something to uh, to to give me a professor that you know that who is not in this department. Litkui. Litkui. Professor Litkui is a is a prominent professor at the mechanical engineering, right? So you want to send. Typically, they are in the same uh, different address, and you get. I'm going to erase that, okay? Let me make sure that I'm grabbing this on the video. And I'm not. Okay. So, assume that you want to send it to Professor Litkuri. And his address is 193.6.7.132. Okay? So, what does this, uh, do you want to send uh, your message to him? And his address is this. So, what does your computer do? Your computer does is, you know, ma tries to match your network address with Litquiz network address. Your address is based on this uh, based on this mask your network address is this now mask this network mask with this address what do you get what is the network address of this address this IP address 193 what? What is the binary value of 132? There's 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. It is 128 plus 4 is 132. That's what you get. Now you add this and this. You add these 8 bits with these 8 bits. What do you get? 1 and 1 is what? 1. one. The rest is 0, 0. So that is his network address, which is 192.193.671. Your network address is 193.670. So Litkui is not in your network. So what do you do? No, well, uh, that's all you know. You know that this is this is your, your it's your host. Typically, on your host, when you set up your network address, what information does your network have when it is, it is set up for IP addressing? And we talked about it. So you get your IP address. What else? Subnet mask. Subnet mask. Yes, and deferred gateway. Deferred gateway. Okay, do you know? Default gateway is for what? When somebody is not in your subnet, you don't know where to send it. But the only person that you know is the g default gateway. 
And the default gateway is what? Assume the default gateway is 193.6.7.1. Typically, the first node they put it as the default gateway. Okay. So, uh, bu 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 okay. So this is uh, uh, this. Is, so your your computer sends sends it to the gateway, and the gateway takes care of it. You don't care because the gateway is a part of the internet now. The router knows how to route in the internet. And how does it send it to the gateway? The same way that to send it to Nano. The first thing that you have to do, you have to get the MAC address of the gateway. So you send an ARP, get the MAC address, and send it to the gateway. Gateway gets it, and then said, aha. So what gateway gets it is your IP datagram, plus the frame header. And the gateway strips that one, gets the same datagram, the same IP datagram, and decides what to do. So it goes into the network, and now it uses some routing function to send it to the gateway of Professor Litkui. Once the gateway receives that, looks at the IP address and says, aha, uh -huh, this address is in one of the subnets attached to me and just broadcast it to that one. So that's how it goes. Okay, so that's the principle. So if your destination is in between your subnet, the link layer takes care of it. If it is not, then the routing function kicks in and you send it through. So that's what we did. Now, we have two for routing function, we have a network with routers, and the idea is what is the best path from this router to that router. There were two classes of routing functions, routing algorithms. What were they? Joe? There were two classes of routing. Mm -hmm. um, almost one where you know all about all the different nodes. We call it, they have a very specific name. Well, Jessica, do you remember? They were link state and, and the, what was the other one? Maggie? No, no. no. It's the class of routing algorithm were link state and distance vector. There are two classes. Dijkstra is an algorithm of link state. Okay. So, so these are two algorithms that we use to send to get our datagram from this router to a remote router. Okay, and remote router uses the link layer to broadcast it. Okay. Now, in link state, how does how does that work? What you know, on what principle does it work? Paul. Stan. Stan, uh, so what is, is the principle of link state routing? Link state class of algorithms. Speak up. Is it with the shortest path? All of them are shortest path. All of them they try to find the short base path. The link state, every, first of all, the information is global. Every router has the same information. In link state, every router lets all other routers know the state of its adjacent links. So if you are all routers, I'm connected to Nana and Stan. So I will tell everybody that, hey, everybody, I'm connected to Nana and Stan. And these are my links specific, and there's so much delay, capacity, etc. Everybody says that to everybody else. So when every this information is broadcast complete, so what do I have? I have the information of the entire network. Entire network. And everybody has it. At that time, uh, so that's link state. At that time, we run the algorithm. The, the specific algorithm for link state was what? The extra. And we went through the steps that Dijkstra goes. And Dijkstra, what it does is that once we run the algorithm at each node, 
Vishnu joins the dark star with them independently. Okay? Because we know that after the information is broadcast, all nodes have the same information. So, every node runs Dijkstra algorithm and finds the shortest, the shortest three, three, T-R-E-E, -E, routed at this node. It's a tree network, which means that there is no loop in the network. And based on that tree network, I can set up my routing table. Okay, so that is where we left it. So let me start it. So let's go back here. Uh, for example, if you have this network, if you run the show, if you run uh, the, the, the the algorithm, the extra algorithm, we find this this shortest uh, tree routed, shortest path tree routed at no, node A. That's this one. And based on that, I can set up my routing table. And this specifically it says that if I want to go from A, the routing table is nothing but a table. One column is the destination, and the next column is what's the next node, or the interface. Okay? So if, if it is shortest, uh, shortest path tree routed at node A, if I have a node A, I want to go to node A, I'm there. If I want to go to node B, I go to node B. If I want to go to node C, you see that I have to go here. I go to node D. Everything else, I have to go to node D. Okay? And then we also said that the shortest path tree routed at a node is different from each other. In this example, we show the same network. I run my tax algorithm on this node. And then I get this shortest path tree. Now, as an exercise, let's see. What is the routing table What is the routing table at node B? So again, there's a table is destination and next node. Right? So, and then under destination I put all possible destination B, C, D, E, F. So, if, if at node B, at node B, I want to go to node A, look at this tree. What is the next node that I have to go? Stand. A. A. If I want to go to node B, I'm there. If I want to go to node C, what node should I go to? Stand. C. C. Node D, Node D is D. Node E, I cannot see that. Can you? No. D. F? D. So that's the routing table at node, uh, node uh, B. Is it okay? Are you okay? Do you understand? No. I understand. Did you understand routing table at node A? This is routing table at node A. Okay? At node A, this is your shortest path tree. Forget about this. It, on this network, if you want to go from node B, where do you go? You go to node B. If you want to go to node C, how do you go? You go here and go here. So what is your next node? No, no. I'm going from A to node C. Oh, so my next node will be D. That's what we are saying. Oh. If I want to go from node A to node E, what's my next node? D. D. That's how we set up the table. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was asking, how about uh, this network? If I want to go from node B, we are talking about node B. This is the routing table at node B. Mm -hmm. If I want to go to node A, I go directly. 
If I want to go to node B, I'm there. If I want to go to node C, I go here. If I want to go to node D, here. If I want to go to node E, I go to D first and then here. So that's what I put. So that's how you said. If you're going to E, you can go to C, then E. I want to go to, from node B to node F. Look at the red network. Just oh. close your eye and remove the black networks. Oh, okay, okay. So this is the shortest path tree rooted at node B. And based on that, you set up your routing table. Okay? Got it. Very good. So that's, that's where we are. Okay? Uh, now, uh, any question? Any question? Is it clear? Hopefully. Okay. Now, now, this uh, Dijkstra, so that's the principle. And we see that how it is work and how, uh, how it works in practice. And by the way, I am hoping to finish the, the essential parts of chapter four tonight. So we get ready for the final. And I'll give you some hints uh, how the network, the final will be, and then we end the class. That is the plan. Okay, so again, let me make sure that this is working properly. Yeah. What's that? Okay. Now, uh, there is a uh, there is a <coughs> there are some uh, details on Dijkstra. <laughs> the, the details that you have to be aware of, and there are some anomalies that people see in practice. Assume, assume that you start your network fresh, okay, and uh, your metric is. Your metric is the level of traffic on your links. So this is a network. You send one unit of traffic from here. Everything wants to go to A. Okay? And so there is one unit of traffic. So the shortest path from A to uh, D to A is what? This guy. So you, you start pumping your traffic here. And the short, uh, the, from B to A is one message per second, say. So you send here. Then node C comes up and he tells very small epsilon, epsilon traffic sending it to A. These two paths, they are the same to start with. They don't have any traffic. So assume that you choose this one. Okay. Now, a couple of seconds later, then you know, they start sending your link state information from all nodes to each other. So you see that the traffic here is one plus epsilon, here is epsilon, here is zero, here is one. So at this time, what becomes the shortest path from node C to node A? Maggie? Um, from C to A? Mm -hmm. uh, no, yeah. no you, you know, if you go here, now the weight, the weight of the links are the traffic. So this is epsilon here, this is one plus epsilon, so this is one plus, you know, this, this, is, this becomes longer than this guy, because this one is zero plus one. So the shortest path becomes this guy. So a couple of seconds later, so what do you decide? To send your traffic this way. That's what you do. Okay? And so you send your traffic. And how about this guy? The traffic here is, the total traffic is one plus epsilon, but here is zero plus zero plus, no, this one is one. So this one, the weight of this path is less than this guy. So not only this guy sends here, and this guy also starts sending here. Do you see that? Maggie, do you see that? I do. Um, isn't there an E over there too? So from B to C, or from the arrows? No, no. The, the, uh, the arrow is, is, e is going this way, not that way. Okay. Not that way. So this way is, you know, the traffic is zero. Zero, uh, 
one, so everything starts sending it there. So now again, people start you know, doing the extra, and this guy says that, aha, uh -huh, I find a better way. So they go back, and so that's the level of traffic here. So this is zero because nothing goes here. This is zero. This is one, one plus epsilon, two plus epsilon. If you want the dark star again, then what you get is that everybody starts sending this way. And again, if you do that, so this starts oscillating. So and this is a phenomenon that does happen if you are not careful. It does happen in real network also. There is some oscillation. So in order to prevent it, uh, there is a, there are a couple of ways to do it. You see that that's what it shows. So it's bad. It's bad. In order to prevent it, what you do is that uh, that's one of the things. Uh, mandate link costs not depend on traffic, which is not practical. Okay, not acceptable because the traffic is a measure of the uh, load on the network. So you want to take keep that in mind. Or the other thing that you do is you make sure that this synchronization, this update is not synchronized. Not everybody does it at the same time. Okay? So you start to randomize uh, the synchronization, randomize when you send your traffic update. And th to most uh, degrees that works. But the observation is that when everybody does a random update, after a while, every, everybody goes into synchronized, synchronized update also. So, uh, but that is the solution. They try to randomize the update so that to prevent this, to prevent this. Okay, so that is the problem. Now, uh, so that was the story of uh, link state. Okay. The other routing, the class of routing algorithm is distance vector. So how did distance vector work? Joe, do you remember the principle? Um, yes, no recognition of the links that are using to me. What's that? You only know about the ones that are around. No, what do you, what do you inform and whom do you inform it? Inform what? Your neighbors and I, I inform my neighbor of what? How busy? No. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? You know, how does Link's distance vector work? You don't know. Jesse. Don't you inform them of how far away each code is from you? In a sense, yes. In a sense, yes. I tell my neighbors how far away I am from everybody else. So I tell Nana that, listen, I can get to Joe in, say, two hops. And I can get to, Jess, uh, to Boyang in five hops. Okay? And then I also tell uh, Stan that I can get to Boyang from this you know, in five hops. I can give you the best way. Then Nana, when she wants to decide. The, the principle is the following. If I know that Nana can get to Jessica in four hops, I know that Stan can get to Jessica in one hop, okay? Then I, I will calculate that if I want to go to Nana is four plus one is five. If I want to go through Paul is one plus one is two. So Paul is a better choice. Okay, so that's how I do that. Notice that I don't have any information about the entire network. Only my neighbors tell me what they know. And then, then I have uh, my information. So I know that if I go through Paul, is one plus one is two. If I go from uh, Nana, one plus four is five. Next time I tell Nana that, listen, I can get to Maggie with two hops. And Nana says that, oh, in my drafting table, I can get to Maggie through Booyang with four hops. So if she comes through me, it's one plus two is three hops. So next time that she wants to send something to Maggie, comes to me. So that's how it works. Every now and then, people update themselves. Okay. It's, it, mathematically, it's a, very, it's a totally distributed algorithm. 
everybody has some pieces of information. When we put it together, we have the entire inform you know, we have a good routing, routing of the entire network. So that is how it works. Now to the, to explain it, that becomes a little bit confusing. So you have to bear with me. And this thing, I don't know why. Okay. So the principle is the following: the shortest distance from a node to a destination via a given neighbor. I want you to go to Maggie via Stan. The shortest distance from a node to a destination via a given neighbor is the shortest distance from the neighbor to the destination plus the dis distance from me to the neighbor. So whatever his destination is that, his plus mine, hers plus mine. Then I compare and say, oh, this is a better choice for that dis destination. That's how it works. Okay? So the algorithm that people use is a Bellman Ford. There were two mathematicians. I think they were at Stanford. They are retired now, or maybe deceased. Okay? So that is how the mathematically we can show it this way. Let's use this notation. It says d sub x of y is the cost of least cost path from node x to y. So d of me to Maggie is cost of least cost path from me to Maggie. So then that's how we calculate it. This, my cost, my least cost to node y is the minimum value of this amount. I, I calculate it over all of my neighbors, and I find the minimum, va minimum value of this, and I choose that. Minimum value of me to my neighbor, plus the cost of neighbor to the destination. And I calculate it over all of my neighbor, and choose the minimum one that becomes my cost to the destination. Okay, so that's the principle. Understood? Good. Okay. Now, uh, yeah. Now, here is some example. Uh, the minimum cost of V to Z, V to Z, is what? Look at this uh, this this network. Sam, what is the minimum cost of V to Z? This is this one, right? Because this is 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5. Anything else is more expensive. Okay, 3 plus 1 is 4, 6, 8. So this is a bit. So this is the distance. What is the minimum distance of x to z? x to z is what? Is 3. What is the minimum distance of uh, w to z is 3. Okay, so this guy says that duz. If I want to find the minimum distance of from here to this guy, this guy has three neighbors. There's one neighbor, two neighbors, three neighbors. So says that I so I calculate this value over my three neighbors from to, to v to x and to W. Okay, so my cost to V plus V's minimum cost to Z. My cost to X plus X's minimum cost to Z and the same to W. So if we find that, we say 2 plus 5 as for this one. This one is 1 plus 3. This is 5 plus 3. The minimum value of this one is what? This guy is 4. And how did I get it? Through X. So the best uh, value is 4, and if I want to go to here, I choose this guy. That's how I do it. Okay? So this is the next note that I use. It. Now, the, uh, the so, uh, so that is the principle. That's the principle. 
Now the way it works in the in, in real network is the following. When we run this algorithm, this value is kept. Every node x is estimates is, is is an estimation of the least cost from node x to y. Okay? So what x does, x maintains uh, this vector for all of its uh, neighbors. So these are all the neighbors. So no, no. x maintains a table, a vector, maintains this estimate of node x to y from all nodes in the network. Okay? So, so essentially, what it does, okay, so that, that's an estimation. Then, for node x, node x knows cost to each neighbor. Okay? So maintains its neighbor's distance vector for each neighbor uh, v x maintains this guy. Okay. So that is let's let's go through an example to make you more confused. Okay. The key idea is the following. So from time to time, each node sends its own distance vector estimate to the neighbor. Okay. So. I have an estimate of my distance to everybody from each periodically tell my dear, my neighbors only my neighbors what is my distance to everybody okay that's okay. so when x receives the new distance vector this value okay distance vector estimate from the neighbor it updates its own distance vector using bellman ford equation that equation that I sent you gave you. Okay? So distance so so each time periodically when I receive this update, I say my cost to destination Y is minimum over all of my neighbor of my cost to my neighbor from my plus my neighbor's cost to the destination. I find the minimum that becomes my new estimate. And I do that again and again and again, and eventually everybody has the same information, consistent information. Notice that if the routing table is not consistent, what happens is that I want to go to Maggie and we send it to Buyong. Because I know, I think that Buyong has the best path for me to Maggie. If Buyong thinks that I am the best path for him to Maggie, so you send him a message, you send it back. Back, 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 and that will go into a loop. Of course, there is a precaution on a datagram to prevent the loop. What was that precaution? Um, Joe? Uh, time to live. Time to live. There's a, on the datagram, there is a field, TTL. Okay? Typically, they put it to 15. Okay? If it happens 15 times, you drop the datagram. If you drop the datagram, what happens then? You don't know. If we drop the datagram, what happens? But you've got to send back a report. His answer was very good. But nothing should happen because the datagram, we don't promise anything, we drop it. He said something very good. What did you say? Say it again. That, 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 that was correct. And I forgot about it. You send a report. How do you send a report back? How do you send a report back? We drop the message, we send a... ICMP. ICMP. We send an ICMP. We say that the, the TTL uh, expired. We send it to, to... To whom do you send it to? To where the packet came from? The origin node. Yes. Because that's the only thing that we know. We know the origin node, the destination. The destination I couldn't reach, so I sent uh, something to the original. node. That's very good. Yeah, thank you. That's very good. Okay. So that's how it works. Okay? 
So after we do it again and again, this converges that. So, uh, so th that is how the algorithm works. The algorithm is, a, first of all, it's an iterative. We do it something, we do it again and again and again and again. Very much similar to Dijkstra. Dijkstra was an iterative algorithm. Okay. Iterative asynchronous. Each local iteration ca is caused by local. If, so if I have a, assume that I have a stable network and now, and I was, uh, I was going to go to, to Joe via Stan. And all of a sudden, this thing goes down. So let me tell everybody that no, this thing goes down. So if I go through this, this iteration. So each local link iteration is caused by local link cost change or distance vector update message from the neighbor. Or I get an update and I see that there is a change in my routing table. Then I start sending broadcasting. Okay? First of all, and then it's distributed. Which means that not every node has the complete information. I have some information, but collectively we have a consistent information. So each node notifies neighbors only when its distance vector changes. Okay? Neighbors then notify their neighbor and again and again. So that's how it works. So each node, so wait for change in the local link cost or message from the neighbor. We re recompute, re recompute our estimate, and if distance vector up to any destination has changed, we notify the neighbors, all neighbors. Okay, so. Okay, so that is where the confusion comes. Here is a network. Okay, very simple. Three node network. This cost is two, this cost is one, this cost is seven. So initially, I have this table at node X. Node X says that if I want to go, if I want to go from this node to that node, I want to go from X to X. The cost is zero. That's initially because I'm there. If I want to go to from x to y, uh, from x to y, what is my cost? Oh no! If I want to go, okay, I want to add node x table. If I want to go to node cost to y from node x. If I want to go from node x to y, my cost is in initially zero. If I want to go to x, to y is two, and to zero is seven. If I want to go to node x, uh, from a node x to node, uh, yeah, okay. To start with, I don't know the estimate of the, well, I don't know the cost from node Y to this destination. I don't know from node Z to this destination, because I just started. I don't have any information what they don't. Node Y starts also this way. Node Y says that if I want to go from node Y to node X, these are my cost. Y to X is two, Y to Y is zero, Y to Z is zero, okay? And then, uh, Z has the same information. Z wants to go to X, the press cost is seven, Y is one, is zero, okay? So, X sends, so that becomes the routing vector, uh, the, that becomes the base, the, the distance vector for node x, x sends this information to its neighbor, y sends this information to its neighbor, and z sends this information to its neighbors. Now let's see what happens when I receive this information to this guy. Okay? Now, if I receive this information, okay.
my distance to node x, I had it zero. If I want to go via node y to node, see, I get confused here also. Uh, minimum yeah. to calculate this guy I look at that table it says that the minimum distance from x to y is minimum distance of x to y plus distance of y to y or distance of x to z plus minimum distance of y to z. Okay? Now, here x to y is what? x to y is 2. Then I got the distance, I got this vector from y. y says that my distance to node y is 0. So 2 plus 0. So this becomes this value. Do you see that? Okay. No. No, you don't see that. Okay. Do you remember this formula? Yes. Okay. Now let's plug in the numbers. I have just received this and this from you. Okay? Now, you say that my minimum distance to note y is my, my distance to node y plus minimum distance of y to y. Okay? So, this value, my distance x to y is what? It's 2. My distance of y to y is what? Zero. I just got it here, 0. So that becomes 2 plus 0 is 2. Let's look at this value my minimum distance to node y via node z. Okay. okay, I want to go to node y, I want first to go to node I want, uh, z, and then from z to y. Okay, okay, so that is my distance from x to z is 7, and my distance, my, the distance of z to y, I just can receive this. Y told me that I send me this vector is one, so seven plus one is is eight. So what is the minimum value of this one? Is two. Therefore, I put here two here. Two comes here. In order to calculate this guy, I say that my minimum distance from x to z is my minimum of two values. First, my distance from x to y, plus the minimum distance of y to z. Mm -hmm. x to y is what? x to y is 2. Uh -huh. and, uh, and minimum distance of y to z, I just got it. Okay? So that becomes 2 plus 1. So that's one way, one of them. Or, this value, minimum distance of x to z is my distance of x to z plus minimum distance of z to z. My distance of x to z was 7. The minimum distance of z to z, I got 0. So this is 0. So what do I get? So I have here minimum of 2 and 7 is 3. So therefore, this one goes through. In the same way, I update this guy and I put the update this guy. Okay, and so <laughs> so I construct this table iteratively. I don't want to go through it right now because we need more time and we don't have time. So I go, I go through this time. Next cycle, I get uh, this one. Now. So the, what I will find out is that if I want to go 
from x to z, the minimum distance is 3. And it goes from uh, x to z, the minimum distance is 3. And the via network, and how did I get, to, how did I get this? I got it through going to y. So the, the, this becomes my distance vector, and the routing table is set accordingly. Uh, I urge you to, I think, they, you will not have a question on this on the final, number one. But your book goes through it very methodically and slowly. So go through it, and then understand it, and you, you have to do it in your privacy. Okay? Just don't try to understand it now. Go through it, methodically go, and your book explains to you how this, if, if these numbers evolve and how we set up the routing table, and we go th through that. So the short story is that in distance vector, there are updates that we send back and forth. And th through that update, we set up the, the routing tables. Okay? And there is no node that has complete information of the network. So that's how it works. Okay. Uh, there are some anomalies for uh, there are some anomalies for uh, uh, anomalies on, on link state, and okay. Assume that this is the that this is a network. Okay, so um, this is a network. This cost is four. This cost is one. Okay, uh, assume that this cost. So, what's the best path from z to x? Comes from here. And comes from here. Uh, so this link is just is not being used. So you go from here and you use this one. If the cost goes down from four to one, let's see what happens. So at time zero, y detects the link cost changes. So updates its distance vector informs its neighbor. Okay? At T1 receives updates from node Y, updates its routing table, and computes new com computes new list cost to node X, which comes node two. Then then sends its neighbor its distance vector. Now, then at this next time, so, so, so notice what happens. So this cost is 1, tells this guy that my cost is now 1. So this cost becomes 1 plus 1 is 2. Tells node y that this cost to node x is 2. And y knows that if it wants to go through to node x, y or node z, what would be the cost? You come here, and then you go back. 1 plus 2 is 3. So this cost is more than this cost, so that becomes your route. Okay, so that's how it works. Okay? Do you see that, Miat? Yes. Okay, good. Don't fall asleep on me, okay? <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So that's what it says. So at the next time, Y receives disease uh, update, update is routing the purposes, and this cost uh, does not change, to, so Y does not send a message to Z, because the cost has not changed. So, that's how it works, okay? So, uh, so uh, this are Y, Y are distance to node, uh, distance from Y to X, Y are node X is 4, distance to from y to x, y or node z. What is the distance? If I want to go to x, y or node z, would be this plus this distance. It's 1 plus 4. Before change, would be 1 plus 5 is 6. That's how we do that. Okay, so that's 4. Okay. This is the routing table or distance vector at node z, at time 0. It says that if I want to go to from node z, to node x, y on node x, if I want to go from here to here, 
why are these not? I go here, the cost is 50, and I'm there. So the cost is 50. If I want to know, to go from Z, Y or node, Y would be 1 plus 4 is 5. So that's this one. So the minimum of this, each row, that becomes my routing, routing table. So if I want to go through from z to x, I have to go to, to y. That's what it says. Okay? Now, next cycle, this, this guy, the cost goes to 1. Okay? So what I do, do that, I, I, node x notices that the routing table has changed. The routing value has changed. The routing table is, is, stays the same. If I want to go to uh, node Y, if I want to go to node Y, I want to go to node X. From Y to X, I go directly to X. Cost is four. <coughs> Next cycle, the cost has decreased. If I want to go to node Y to X, Y and node X, the cost is one. So I have to update my neighbors. So I tell Z that, listen, my cost is 1. And Z says that if I want to go to, from node Z, I want to go to node X. Why on node X? The cost is 50, has not changed. But if I want to go from node Z to node X, why on node Y, what would be the cost? The cost would be cost of y, which is 1, plus cost of z to y, which is 1. The cost is 2. Okay, so its best cost has changed from 5 to 2. When your best cost changes, you have to tell your neighbors that your best cost has changed. So 2z tells node y that its cost to node x has changed to 2. So at node y says that if I want to go from node y to node x, y on node x, direct my cost is 1. If I want to go to node y, from node y to node x, y on node z, my cost is, uh, my cost is 1 plus cost of node z to node x, which was 2. So that becomes 3. Okay. So here, my routing table didn't change. So everything is stabilized now. Are you following me? Yes. I have a question. You have a question. Uh, I don't uh, understand the first table. Uh, from a distant y to x via z. But uh, why don't you take the uh, 50 of this? Because the, the thing is once, no, once this this is a table at node y, yes. this sounds table, this is a table at node z. Yes. Once I have a table, the principle is that once I have a table, I find the minimum value of each row. And then I use it for my routing. If I want to go to no, uh, from node y to node x, Y on node X is 4. If I want to go to node, node Y, to node X, Y on node Z, the cost is 6. The minimum value is 4. So this is a better place for me to go. If I want to go from node Y to X, I should go through X directly. Maybe. This one? To x by, via x. By x. Oh, yeah, and you go 50, right? So be because because uh, if I want to go to x, y or not, is the, the green cost is 50. So yeah. if I go directly, the cost is... Uh, that makes sense, but then y is in the table above. <coughs> no, above. So if you go from y to x through z, yeah. why do you go y well, to z, z back yeah. to... Because... X? Skipping 50 altogether. Because the principle is that my cost 
the destination why am I neighbor there is my cost to the neighbor plus my neighbor's best cost to the destination what is his best cost to the destination five so y cost two node x y on node z is my cost going to node z plus z's best cost to node a of course there's a loop here but the value is value so this is if I want to go to here I send my message here and z wants to send it the best way that it can send it back and send, send it through There's a, there's a loop. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> but there is a loop. I am, but I am not using that. I'm using I'm using this one. I'm using directly. I'm using this entry. This is the table at node Z. Okay. At no, node I Z. Because the uh, oh. calculate the cost. These are, you have to add this cost. Don't, no, no, don't don't kind of get it. Get it, <laughs> Jessica. Are you, are you are you okay? Can we use a uh, for second table? Uh, from a distance vector uh, z to x uh, via x, uh, can we use 6 instead of 50? So, uh, let me walk with you and then we calculate the cost. I want to go from z to x. Yes. I can go directly to x, it would cost me 50. Or I can go through y to x, it would cost me 5. Right? Look at the table. If I want to go to x, y or y, it's a 1 plus 4 is 5. So this is better for me. So that becomes my routing, uh, routing entry. That becomes my routing entry. Okay. It's a little bit confusing, and I warned you before, but that is the way it is. Are you OK, Jessica? OK. She's quietly OK. Are you OK? Well, yeah. Yeah, it, you know, as I said, you know, if you, the moment you get confused, just step back and then look at it again. Here, here, for sure, there is a there is a loop here, but I am not using that. I'm using this guy. So the short story is that if the cost reduces, I stabilize very soon because from here to here, the routing table didn't change, the distance vectors didn't change, so I stop. I don't update anymore. Got it? Now, the real story comes when we go the routing, the link degrades. So that was my original network. Now the cost goes from 4 to 60. This is bad news. The, the principle is that the good, good news propagates very fast, bad news propagates very slowly. And let's see what that does mean. So initially, that was my uh, distance vector tables, right? This, this is what it, as before. Then here, the cost goes to 60. So this is at node y. These are at node y. So why say that? My cost direct, if I want to go to node x, y on node x, the cost is 60. But if I want to go to node y, the cost is 6. Okay? So this becomes my routing table. That becomes, if I want to go to node x, I have to go to node z. Do you see that? If you see that, nod your head. Because if you don't nod your head, I don't pr uh, proceed. Miyata, are you okay? Uh, I didn't uh, get this one. You, you, you didn't get this one. You see, this, this is my... Uh, initially, you're okay. Yes. Then, next phase, the only thing that changed was this one. Now, the principle is that on the distance vector, I choose the minimum value for my routing table. 
The minimum value between these two values is what? It's six. Which means that if I want to go to uh, to node x, I have to choose z as my next step because this is this gives me z gives me a better cost. Okay. So I tell z that listen, my cost to node x changed from four. Now my cost is six. What's that? I'm not seeing how you got six. What's the best cost of Z to X? Jessica. Z to X. No. If I want to go to from Y to, of course it is five. But if I want to go to node X, Y or node Z? What would it cost? I go to Z, it costs of one. Wait, you're starting at, you just said you're starting at Z. Oh, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, no, here is, here is for node Y. If I said it, I was confused. But, I am at node Y. I want to go to node X. And as my next step, I, note, I use node Z. What would be the cost? I would come to Z and tell Z, send me to X with your best path. The best path from Z to X is what? Five. It's five. So Z1 plus five is six. So that's why I have six here. There's a loop. Definitely there is a loop. But I'm not using that. Okay? I, I only use the best value that I have. Okay, I have another question. Let's, 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 let's this, we settle down. Yeah, hold on to your question definitely. Are you, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, please. Uh, say this the value, uh, let's evaluate the number of before uh, we uh, raise the number 4 to 60, right? Say it again. Uh, 6 is the value, not the dot 6 from the second table. This one? Yeah, yeah. This one, the only thing from here to here, the only thing that changed was that I realized the cost goes to six, yes. 60, because this is next to me. I, I, I calculated. Oh, you just changed it? Yeah, yeah. We know, I, we know that the, the, the cost went, jumped from 4 to 60, the delay. And this is my next note. I can, I can measure it. That's the only thing that happened. But this, this thing, I didn't get any notification. Just wait, 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 we'll change that, okay? There's only one change. There's, there's only one change. Oh, there's, one change. These are one, uh, T0, 1, 2, 3, the time progress is like this. Okay? okay. So, so here, so when it happens, when, uh, so my, my routing table changes, my best value to, uh, to node X changed from 4 to 6 now, because now I think that the best value is 6. So I tell, I tell Z, Y tells Z that, listen, my best value to node X is now 6. But it's not really 6. It's, no, just bear with me, just a second. Okay. okay, so Z says that, okay, Y just told me that his best value to node X was 6. My cost to node Y is what? One. So if I want to go to node X via node Y, my cost would be seven. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You see that, Jessica? Mm, yeah. Because you're going to. No, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm changing the six. If you wait here, next time I will change the six. So he doesn't realize the six is dependent on. Say it again. Maybe he you have the. the six is dependent on. He doesn't realize that. No. Yeah. I'm just lo 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 using the table. Yeah. Yeah. You you have you have a global view, but just put yourself in. Myop myopically, myopic. Yes, myopic. Myopically. Just put it in your node Y and node Y only. Put it on your node Z and node Z only. So node Y 
The only way that you know triggers update is that its routing table changes, because now it says that it, uh, Y thinks that Z's cost to node X was six, so it's a better way for him to go to node X rather than sixty. Okay, so tells Z that listen, my cost to node X is not six, and Z says that uh huh. If your cost is six, my cost to node y, I just heard from node y that its best cost was six. My cost to node y is one. Therefore, my best cost from node z to node x via node y would be seven. Right? Now, from here to here, a node z notices that its cost to node its best cost to node x changed. So it has to notify its neighbors. So it notifies node y again that listen, my cost to node x now changed to 7. So then y say, that, uh, y say that my best cost to node x via node z is my cost to node z which is 1 plus node z's cost to node x which is 7, which is 8. So still, between these two I choose this one. Which means that when it goes up, I think that it's better to send here, send here back, send here back. This is a loop here. But the routing table shows that. And it goes that for next time it goes to 9, then it goes to 10, dot, 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 this continuous 60 cycles till it, it, this table stabilizes. Then it realizes that, Y realizes that, Z realizes that it's better to go this way rather than this way. So there is a loop here. Why did it happen? And you mentioned that. Because um, like the 6, it doesn't realize that it's dependent on the 16. It happened because I am updating the node that I'm using for base path, I'm using, I'm updating him. While I'm using you for my best path, I'm using, I'm updating you with my best path to node X. I know that if I want to go to Joe, I have to go to Sam. Sam updates me. Then I do, I cannot say, Sam, my best, you are my, you are my next node to, know, to Joe. And this is my update. Because you don't need that, because you already know that. And that was the reason. Okay? So we block it. Okay? So we block it, and there is a good term for this. Oh. They call it poisoned reverse. We poison this, uh, this path for update. Okay? If Z is route through node Y, if Z routes through node Y to get to X, Z tells Y it's Z's distance to node X is infinite. Okay, so if I if I use Sam to not get to Joe, okay, when I want to update Sam with my distance to Joe, I tell Sam that listen, my cost to Joe is infinite. So next time you don't try to use me to get to him. Okay, so that's called poisoning, poison reverse. Okay, this is a term that they use it. And it happens. It happens very often. Okay, I mean, it, if you are not careful, it does happen. Okay, so do you build this complexity of the infinity? Yeah, no, it, it, it solves it. Okay, if you go through the cycle, you see that it, it solves it. So let's, do you want to walk through it? Okay, it says that. So initially, rather than six, I had infinite because because. Okay, so I am using z is using y to get to x initially. Okay, so when z is updates y with its distance to x, it tells y that its distance is infinite. So in the distance table, y has this value. Says that if I want to go to x, y node x, my cost is four. If I want to go to node x via node z, my cost is infinite. So that prevents the loop. Okay. So next time, 
So on, on the node Y has this, this table. The cost jumps from 4 to 60. So, so the cost changes. So this guy, Y tells Z that, listen, my cost is 60 now. So Z updates its distance table. This value from Z to X, Y node X is 50, didn't change. From Z to X, Y node Y is distance of Z to Y, which is 1, plus the new distance of Y to X, which is 60, so that becomes 61. So it reports to this guy. Now, now, so for Z, the next hop to, if I want to, from Z, if I want to go to node X, which node do I go to? I go this color, right? You're laughing because you're confused, me too. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you have to be careful here. So between these two, I choose the minimum value. That corresponds to x, which means says that this table says that the way to go from z to x is directly go to x. So my routing vector has changed. So I notify the, the neighbor. I notify the neighbor. Y says that if I want to go to x directly, the cost is 60. If I want to go to x, y node z is z's cost to x, which is 50, just reported to me, plus one. So this graph becomes 51. Okay? So then when it reports, so, so the, uh, Y realizes that the best way for him to go to node X is to go to Y. So he wants to report this value to node X. Because it is the reporting, it's the next node, it says that my cost to X, Y, or Z is infinite. It puts infinite here. Okay? So that's how it goes. So that's, that's called Poisson reverse. There's, uh, this, this, is, uh, this aspect has uh, some tricks that you have to be careful. OK? OK. Now, so there are two algorithms. This aspector, Dijkstra, or oh, this aspector, Bellman Ford, link state, uh, link state Dijkstra. Both of them are being used. Okay, both of them. If you thought that you would learn one, you don't have to learn the other one, that's not true. You have to learn both of them. Okay? Uh, let's take a short break, five minutes only, please. And come back soon so we can wrap up.